Hey everyone, welcome back to White Sparrow Living, Luke 12, 6. I'm Wendy, and today we're doing some Dollar Tree DIYs for your spring home decor. If you like these projects, don't forget to give them a thumbs up, comment, let me know what you think. And now, without further ado, let's get started. For this project, I'm using a bamboo wreath, eight tulip stems, and some nylon zip ties. And all I did was pulled off the leaves. I didn't quite like the color and I wanted this to be pure white for Easter. And so I'm just gonna get those all ready and then cut the stems down so that it's just, they're still together, but I'm just getting rid of that extra portion. And then on any of those flyaway petals on your tulips, I just use some hot glue and poke those together just to make them a little more confined or in that tulip shape. I didn't make them perfectly perfect. I let some of them go so it's Still looked pretty natural and then I'm going to take those and start attaching them to my bamboo wreath and I'm just going to kind of curve those wired stems so that they go around the curve of the wreath and then just put those zip ties around there and then when I would go on to the second one I'm actually attaching both of those stems in that with that second zip tie if that makes sense anyway I used a total of eight of them you could use more but I knew I was going to put a big fat bow on the bottom so I did that using some Dollar Tree ribbon and on this one I used the burlap with the lace and I thought the white looked so pretty I did I think four loops on each side and then gave it two big long tails I'll attach that with some chenille stem and then put it at the bottom of my wreath and just foof out my loops and curly cue the tails. And if you want to see how I make these big perky bows in a little bit more detail, I'll have a video linked in the description box below. But here it is all finished and I just love how pretty this turned out. It's perfect for the Easter season. You can make two if you have two doors, but you can also have it inside. I love it and I hope you like it too. So Dollar Tree carries these plastic tubs and I always see them in every season, but for spring, the colors were just so pretty. So I thought I would do this quick and easy DIY using this pretty teal one. I used a piece of floral foam and I'm just gonna hot glue that inside. And then I took this adorable little bunny and he's holding a banner that says spring. So I'm just gonna push him into that floral foam. And then I have some Excelsior that came in a very sweet gift box from my sweet friend Kat at According to Cat, And she sent this to me for my mom and I'm just gonna use this, but you could use any kind of filler or moss or whatever. I'm gonna tuck that all around on top of the foam and in front of the bunny. I don't want that blue part really showing too much, so this is all gonna cover it up. So I took these really pretty pinky hydrangeas from the Dollar Tree. I cut off the bottoms and just tucked it in there. And then I took some frosty greenery from the Dollar Tree and just cut those apart and tuck those in here and there just to make a really pretty spring bouquet. Super easy, super simple, and I think this is so pretty. And here it is all finished. And this took five minutes maybe. And <laughs> I think he's so adorable for springtime. I know my grandkids love it. It's actually now at a school as part of their spring decor. And you guys know I don't normally use plastic in a lot of my projects because like my aunt always taught me, plastic is like undergarments, necessary but should never be seen. <laughs> so this is the exception to that rule though because I think these buckets are so adorable. So I also picked up a pink one as well as some little bunny fannies from the Dollar Tree. They come in a package of five, so I'm gonna use all five. And the first thing I did was took some skewers and I'm gonna paint them with my moss green chalk paint. And then I'm gonna take my adorable little fannies cut a little hole in the back and then pop my skewer right up inside there 
this again hurts me so much. <laughs> but anyway, just be careful not to go through the front of the bunny and just go right in between that batting and through that felt. So now I'm going to take some scrap styrofoam and I think this is just from some packaging or something as well as some onion grass from the Dollar Tree and whatever this is. I don't even know what it's called. I can't even read it. And then I'm just going to separate those little stalks of the onion grass. There's about five little individual pieces. So I cut those apart and then just started sticking them into my styrofoam until I get it all nice and full. This took a total of four of the full stems. And then I took the little blue flowers, whatever those are called, and I'm gonna poke those in here and there as well. And then just start poking the little fannies in there. I want these at different heights, so I broke my skewer according to what height I wanted it at. And now you see why we painted those skewers in that mossy green color, because you can't see the sticks at all. And then I did take two of the little butterflies that came on the onion grass, and I'm going to poke those onto a couple of those stems as well. And then to cover up all of that styrofoam at the bottom, I'm just going to add some green moss in there and get that all covered up. I would recommend actually putting that in first before we put in the onion grass or any of the other goodies and then to add some pink to get that pink incorporated in there I just used a couple of daisies popped those in there and it was done and here it is all finished and I just think this is so cute and shake your cottontail is perfect for this one because we've got a whole bunch of little cottontails peeking out and shaking anyway I love this and I hope you like it too For this project, I'm using three of the garden kneeling pads. Now you guys know I don't do any gardening, so these will not get used as kneeling pads, but I thought the colors were so pretty and springy. So what I'm gonna do is take a piece of Dollar Tree's poster board that you can get in the school supply area. I'm gonna cut that down to the size of the kneeling pad and then trace out a silhouette of a bunny. And I just looked online and did it by hand. I tried to do it without even looking, but it was not, <laughs> it was not working well. So I just got that on there and then I'm going to cut that out and use that as a template to trace that onto each of my kneeling pads. So now I'm gonna take my craft knife and I'm gonna start cutting along my trace lines. Now, of course, my video is sped up, so it doesn't look like it's taking very long, but it did take a little bit more time than I had anticipated because this is really thick foam. And so you just really have to dig in there and go over it a couple of times before it actually comes out. So, but just be patient, listen to some music while you're doing this or whatever. And I did forget to mention, I did put the feet or the little paws of my bunnies at the very bottom where it's flat on my kneeling pad so that it would help stand up when we're done with this. I did think about using an electric knife, you know, like a turkey cutter, but by the time I thought of that, I was almost done. So I just went ahead and finished it my way. So after I got those all three cut out, I'm going to take some 5 8 inch linen ribbon. This is actually from burlapfabric.com, but you can use any kind of ribbon that you want to just go over the edges and cover up those rough areas. And the ribbon is a little bit longer or wider than the actual kneeling pad itself. So I want that part that goes over the edge to be toward the back. So the front, I'm gonna make sure it lines up exactly with the side of the ribbon, if that makes sense. And then once I get those all covered and give it that pretty nice edge, I'm gonna embellish their necks with some more of that linen ribbon and I just made sweet little bows and then took some Dollar Tree hydrangeas in white and some of their frosty greenery. Just cut those pieces apart and hot glue them onto their necks and then just hot glue that bow right over the bottoms of our little greenery pieces. And be careful not to get any hot glue onto that foam of those kneeling pads. On the teal one, I got a little bit of drippies on there and when I pulled it up, it does rip it. So just be careful of that. You'll see that in a second.
And then to stand these babies up, I'm gonna take three of the Jenga blocks, glue those together, and then glue them onto the back. And here they are all finished and I think these are so pretty and springy looking. I love these colors and so I do notice that if you walk by them or when I had my ceiling fan on they would kind of topple or you know kind of go back and forth. So another option that I'll show you here in a second is putting a dome over them. I don't know that everybody would have this tall of a dome but you could make it to the size of whatever your dome is that you have. But another thing I made this box a long time ago or I don't know I think at Thanksgiving time, I'm not sure my years are running together, but I just tucked them all inside of this Dollar Tree box that I made and then they stayed snug as a bug in a rug and they look so adorable. I love them and I hope you like them too. So for this project, I'm using two of these happy birthday signs from the Dollar Tree. And I, th I love this project, it's so cute. But I'm gonna do it a couple of different ways. So on this first one, I'm using two of them and I'm gonna cut out little bunny ears. I cut out the first one and then I'll use that as a template for the second one so that our ears are the same or close to the same. And then once I get those cut out, I'm gonna paint that with my white chalk paint. And then I'll go back and make the inside of his ears or it could be her ears with some pink chalk paint in ballet slipper and then I'll add a little bit of white to the center give it some highlights and that's it now because these are outdoors or they're gonna be outdoors I'm gonna cover them with some Mod Podge so that it stays waterproof and you can leave these outside and I don't know what would happen if you didn't cover it and I should do a test on that to see if rain actually will make your chalk paint run or anything. I don't think it would after it sets for a while, but who knows? I just did it for protection. And so actually I'm remembering now, I didn't put the Mod Podge on this one. You'll see I do on the next one, but we'll see if it rains. It has rained. I'm going to have to go check and see. So we've done a science project. Anyway, once I get that all on there, you'll just see what I do. And then I'm going to poke them into my bush out in front and it's done. And here they are all done. <laughs> this is so cute. I love this so much. My grandkids really love them. And I just popped them right into my bush and they are poking out like there's a little bunny inside there. I think they're just adorable. I did check them after the big rains that we had here in Southern California and they are still perfect. And I did not add the Mod Podge. So once that paint cures, I guess you're good to go. So now I'm going to do this project using the same happy birthday banners. I have a few of them. Now one of them I'm going to take off the backing where the little stake slides in. So I just took my Cricut spatula and carefully lifted that off of the back of my sign. And then I'm going to take a piece of scrap board. You could just measure this or do whatever. Take a piece of paper, straight edge, whatever. Just make a cross and this one we're doing sideways so that it's larger than the other two that we're going to do to be the other two crosses. And on the two smaller ones, I'm going to leave the backs where the stakes go and those are going to stay in there because they're going to be smaller and they're in the right place. But on the larger one, I want it going up and down and make it larger. So that's why we're taking that off and then we're going to reposition it once it's all done. So I used my white chalk paint, painted it completely white. And then on top of all of them, I'm going to use my Waverly Antique Wax. I'm gonna do my strokes in the same direction on both the beam going vertically and then on the beam going horizontally. So I want this to look like wood. And then after I get it done on the two smaller ones, I took a kind of damp wet nap and I'm gonna go through there and make those same 
like striations or, you know, to make it look like wood and let that white show through. And so I'm making those two lighter. And then on the larger one, I'm going to make that a lot darker because that's going to be in the front and that's going to be the Jesus cross. So we want that one to stand out. So then I took a brown paper bag and I'm going to rip out a piece that will fit at the top of my cross, get that to the right size. And then I'm going to write the letters I N R I with my black paint pen. Of course, you can just use a Sharpie or marker or whatever. And that's going to be in place of the sign that was actually on his cross at the crucifixion. And it's the abbreviation for Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. So I've got my sign ready. And then before I do that, I'm going to take my white paint pen, shake it up so that it gets all distributed and nice and juicy. And I'm just going to write risen at the top of my cross. And of course, you can use your cutting machine or you can trace this on there and do that transfer method, whatever you want to do. I just did it in cursive because it's a pretty short word, so <laughs> I was good with my spacing. So then I'm going to take my Mod Podge, and I did smear this a little bit because I didn't wait long enough for my white uh, paint pen to dry completely so it did smear a little bit and I had to go back and redo and do some touch-ups but that's okay and then I'm going to take my Mod Podge and cover the entirety of my cross and then I also did the little ones as well and even though my bunny ears did make it through the reins I did want to take special care with this one because I'm using antique wax it does dry but I don't think it would be as resilient as the chalk paint so now once everything's all done I'm going to turn my big cross over and re-glue my stake holder onto the back of my cross. Again, I wasn't patient enough and it wasn't completely dry. The Mod Podge was a little tacky. So when I turned it over, it stuck to the paper on my work surface. So when I pulled it up, there was a little piece that came off. So I had to do a little bit more touch-ups on that one. And then I'm just going to place my stakes into the ones that are already in place. And one of these stakes is blue. I'm going to go back and paint that black so that they all match. And then I have this little ghosty from Halloween that I just wanted the fabric from it because it's super light and flows really nicely. So I'm just gonna cut a strip of that off and then wrap it around my cross. I used tape in the back so that it would stay in place, but I didn't want it to cover my risen. And so I just spread it apart as much as I needed to, taped it in the back and it was done. And here they are all finished and I love this so much. It's so pretty, especially at night. I'll show it to you guys with my little spotlight on it. It's in front of my olive tree that's in the front yard. And so I thought it was perfect that there's actually a rock behind it too. I can't even tell you how close I was to painting an opening and putting another rock in front of it to make it look like a tomb, but I did not. I don't know, maybe we'll do that next year. But I love this so much and I hope you like it too. I hope you enjoyed these projects, and if you did, don't forget to give them a thumbs up, comment, let me know what you think. Remember the reason for the season. I hope everyone has a blessed day, and remember to always be the light. Bye!